Hello, hello, Munger Place. How are you guys doing today? It is awesome to be here. It is a great privilege to be here with you guys today. And I hope that your uh, quarantine has been going amazingly as everybody else's has. I hope that your hair is in its place, that your makeup is looking beautiful and everything else is just coming along. It's great to be here with you. My name is Josue Padilla. For those of you who do not know me, And for those of you who know me, it's also Josue Padilla. And it's a pleasure to be here with you guys. And uh, I just want you to know that if you don't know me, it's okay. I am an old friend of uh, Munger Place, and I've been there uh, for quite some time. I used to be the youth director for the Church of God South Central Region, so I was there uh, a lot during the time that your new couples, the ones that have anybody that has children between five and ten years old right now, I was their youth director point but it's awesome to be here and i want to thank uh, lupe and efrain for calling me and saying hey is it possible for you to be with us and i just uh wanted to tell you that i am happy to be here and i am happy to share the word that god has placed on my heart i know that it'll bless you if you've never heard me before you're in for a treat because uh I have no filters. I am unexpected. Sometimes you'll hear me make a joke. Sometimes you'll hear me cry. And sometimes you'll see me right right here between your eyes. But I just want to tell you that no matter what it is that you get from me or you hear from me, I'm doing it because I love youth ministry. I've been a youth minister for more than 22 years now. And it is just amazing to be here with you guys today. So I was invited to be here with you to share the word of God. I know this is a Zoom broadcast, and so we don't have a lot of time to go. We're just trying to do something quick, but something that will impact your heart during this week. And uh, thank you for everything that you're doing for your church, continuing to be faithful. If you are a young uh, men or women that are working, continue to support your church financially. I know we're all in changing times. But I know that the Lord will bless us throughout all this process. So I don't have uh, much more to say other than thank you. I hope that you open your hearts to listen to the word of God. And I'm just going to share it with you from the of my heart, hoping that the Lord blesses you. Today, we're going to be in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. So if you have your Bible there, uh, go ahead and look for it. You can do it on your phone or you can go to the good old book, uh, you know, the book i when i preach and i'm talking this while you find your scripture uh this one will never run out of battery this one will always be available and this one uh i don't know there's there's something about the book so if you don't have one i i i i encourage you to do so i'm just an old soul so i uh, thank you for being here so uh here is the scripture isaiah 53 chapter one i'm going to read several verses and then i'm going to uh, going to be speaking about some stuff so uh this is uh what we call holy week uh, or semana santa in spanish and so we want to thank you uh for taking the time to be here with us today and the scripture says as follows verse one it says who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the lord been revealed he grew up before him like a tender shoot like a root out of the ground he had no beauty or majesty to attract us Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind and man of suffering, a familiar and familiar with pain. Like one whom people hid their faces, he was despised and he was held and we held him, I'm sorry, in low esteem. Notice this. Surely he took up our pain and he bore our suffering. Yet we consider him punished by God stricken by him and afflicted but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed we all like sheep have gone astray each of us has on our own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all Notice this, he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before the shearers in silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? Notice this, for he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked 
and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and to cause him to suffer. And through the Lord makes his life of offering for sin. He will see his offspring and prolong his days. Watch this. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand after he has suffered. He will see the light of life. He will be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant will, will justify many and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and I will divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Father, we ask you in this moment that your word will just bless every life in this moment, in this place. I ask you, Lord, that through everything that we speak, Father, that you're able to speak to us what you want to say to us and that you will be glorified through all of this. And in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. The scripture that we have today, it begins with uh, the book of Isaiah is the what we call the old gospel or the, 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 the book of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the only book in the Bible that it actually speaks of Jesus and his coming. But I want to read something to you from a commentary that I have, and then I will go into my commentary about what I have to say to you. And please pay attention to this. The suffering servant of the men of sorrows, prophecies of Jesus, speak of the necessity for the servant to suffer for the sins of the people. Isaiah prophetically spoke of the shameful trial of Jesus before Pontius Pilate and his silence before his accusers and of his shameful treatment by the rulers and of his slaughter as a lamb. Uh, on the cross for all of us. But watch this. The author's primary concern is not the suffering, however, but Jesus' amazing triumph over his suffering. Isaiah uses physical terms. By his stripes, we are healed. To describe that when Jesus, he did this, when he did it, he took human form and he took the sin of man upon himself and died in our place. And I this when Isaiah says that the servant will justify many this means that at the very least declaring them innocent legally this is a legal term of justification as the result of him transferring their sins to himself and taking on the punishment but the statement many also may, may also I'm sorry include the impartition of the actual righteousness I want you to know and I want you to understand that the book of Isaiah begins to talk about this in the in the in the first person I'm sorry in the third person rather than in the first person in other words Speaking of what is coming, it is a prophecy that is coming. And he's just basically letting us know that the suffering of Jesus Christ came and was done for a purpose. And he begins with a question and he says, who has believed their message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? In other words, he's asking this question because he wants to point out that this revelation is a revelation that has not happened yet. This prophecy, I'm sorry, is, is a prophecy that has not happened. But he is announcing what is to come. Contrary to what they were expecting, he's saying, hey, listen, the Messiah that is coming will come to suffer. The Jews were waiting for a Messiah that would conquer over the Roman rule. The Jews were waiting for a Messiah that would basically walk to the white horse with a sword and an army in order for him to take over the oppression that they had been living for all this time. However, Jesus decides to come in a completely different way. And Isaiah begins to mention, mention this. And he says, look, his beginnings were like anybody expected. We're not like anybody that would probably have said anything else. Everybody's expecting a king. Everybody's expecting a royalty. But Jesus decided to do it different. And I want to share this with you today because I want 
want you to realize the importance of what Jesus did for you and for me. Jesus was not coming to establish a kingdom in this world. Jesus was not coming to establish a kingdom on this earth. Jesus was coming to establish a kingdom in the hearts of every man and every woman that would receive his message. So I say, I say, look, we have announced of this person, but nobody believed this because when they see the suffering Jesus, they don't king that they were waiting for and i want you to understand the difference because when the jews were expecting a king they were expecting a political king but jesus was coming to establish a kingdom in the hearts of mankind he was coming to establish a kingdom in the hearts of everybody so that they would understand that he did not have any interest in a kingdom on this earth but on the kingdom that he was already a part of in heaven can i get an amen from you today Today we have to understand that Jesus is still looking for hearts to establish his kingdom. Jesus is still looking for people who are looking into finding to their problems. Listen to me as I speak to you today. We need a savior and we can't save ourselves. That is the problem of humanity that we need to be saved. We need to be rescued, but we have no saving so we needed a savior and Jesus becomes the savior and the writer writes and he says he grew up before him like a tender shoot and shoot up from the ground. In other words, he came from where we did not expect that he came from where we did not were waiting for and he came in a way to do the very purpose that God intended him to do. Notice what it says. Not only did he come in a, such an unexpected manner, but his suffering is not what any king should suffer. Nothing that happened to Jesus, young man and young lady listening to me today, nothing that happened to Jesus was deserving of who he was. Jesus was the creator of all things. Jesus was with God in heaven when everything was made. John chapter 1 verse 1 says that through him and for him everything that was that has been made was made in other words everything that exists including you and me we were created to honor god and to worship him and standing next to the father in heaven god comes up with a plan and says there's only one way of redemption and it's need a price but that someone that needs to pay a price fill some some requirements so let me tell you something of what was expected by the jews because the jews since the time of egypt since the time before uh that they came to the promised land in the desert god set some rules for them and said look this is what i expect from you and one of the covenants that jesus established with them was you are going to every year present a lamb before me and you're going to shed the blood of the lamb and the shedding of that blood is going to remiss your sins in other words, is going to separate and postpone the punishment of your sin. And so the ritual that they would do is that they would kill a lamb. The priest would go and shed the blood of the lamb over another lamb and they would send it off into the desert. That separation of that lamb into a, 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 to the desert would send that sheep with the blood of the first lamb. And watch what happens when they would send that into the desert. It was a symbol of sin being separated from the people of God. And when God accepted that sacrifice every year they would have to do it over and over and over again but what's happening in Isaiah chapter 3 is that 53 I'm sorry is that Isaiah is saying the following in verse number 3 he's saying that we've been presenting at the temple all this time is only a symbol of what it is to be in other words this lamb cannot really take away our sins this lamb that we've been sending off into the desert is only a ritual for us to be reminded that we need a savior and i say to you today you need a you and I needed a savior. You and I needed someone to remove the sin from us. I know that you have a conscience and I know that you have guilt, but there was only one thing that could actually remove the sin from our life. And that was the official lamb that was perfect. So watch what happens. God in heaven 
makes a covenant and he says this is how we're going to do it somebody that is perfect with pure blood with a willingness heart to sacrifice and obedience needs to pay the price and when god sought in the world he sought out who can do this he realized that there was no men for all have sinned and all have sh fallen short of the glory of god then god says there's only one way to do it and it is you my son you are the only thing that I will receive as a sacrifice. You will be perfect. Your blood will be pure. Your sacrifice will be received. And so what you have to do is you have to become like men. You have to give yourself like men. You have to become like them that you should suffer the pain. That's why the scripture that I read you plus the commentary says it was necessary not that we glorify his suffering, but that we glorify the fact that regardless of the suffering, Jesus paid a prize for your sin and my sin. And I ask you again, can I get an amen from somebody? So listen to what verse three says. He was despised and rejected by mankind and a man suffering a familiar with pain that Jesus as a human in his human form, he was rejected. He was stricken. He was punished. He was given a punishment that he did not deserve. He had done nothing wrong, but you and I had, you and I have done sins that have become offensive before the presence of God. You and I had a guilty sign on our forehead because of the things that we have done. But Jesus up in heaven said, father, I will do it. I will pay the price and I want you to look at this because what you've seen in the movies what you've seen in the passion of Christ or the Jesus movie is nothing compared to the actual price that Jesus paid I know we have seen gory scenes in the movies and I know we have seen blood coming from his body we have seen his face be completely deformed but I want you to understand what scripture is saying he's saying it was nothing like that it was worse because notice his description he says he was despised and rejected by mankind notice this a man of suffering and familiar with pain like one whom people hide their face he was despised i want you to figure this picture out right now as you listen to this because you have to realize with me that the picture is not pretty jesus was beaten up he was torn up that's why when he does the communion he says to his disciples this is my body and he bread like saying look this is about how about how i'm gonna be torn apart this is how i'm gonna be this is how I'm going to be destroyed in a couple of hours. I'm not going to look nothing like what you guys are used to seeing me. And he's saying, this is my body. And he breaks it and he tears it in pieces. Every disciple, a piece of it. And so look, look at what Isaiah is saying four to 600 years before. He's saying, listen, his, his complexion, his face was in such a way that we destroyed that we turn our face from him because it's so disgusting and it says we will see this the people will see the destruction of his body the destruction of his flesh but not the destruction of his essence the son of god and notice what it says it says he has been despised and we held him in low esteem my friends sometimes you and i have held jesus in low esteem sometimes you and i have in a, in a place where he should not been held you and i are sinners you and i are people who transgress all the time you and i are people who know exactly what we have done but he had carried no sin in him and the bible says that to him who knew no sin he became sin for us Jesus became sin for your transgressions. And I'm being very passionate about what I say to you because I think that a lot of times we take Jesus as sacrifice and we minimize it to something of a movie. And let me tell you something. Jesus was not just a scene from a movie. Jesus was the son of God, became flesh for your sin and my sins you and i have seen the movie where those things go into his skin tear him apart in the middle of the heat of the day and he gets flipped over and done over again his his appearance is so despiteful and the scripture says we turn our faces from it and a lot of times let me tell you this we look at jesus a sacrifice and we say oh i don't have to go to church today i don't have to be that faithful god doesn't say that i can't do this god doesn't say 
that I can't drink this. God doesn't say that I can't put this on my body. And let me tell you something. I do understand that it doesn't specifically and physically say it, but with what Jesus did for you and for me, would it not be enough to honor him with our life? Would it not be enough for us to be able to say, I know it doesn't say it in black and white and with letters and, a, and, a, and, a, and an I dotted and a T cross, but I will understand that with what Jesus paid for me, the least I can do is submit myself to him. Notice what it says. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we consider him stricken by him and afflicted watch what is saying we just see this and we don't realize that god has put on him our sins my friend let me tell you something you and i should have paid that price you and i should have paid the price for our sins but jesus bore the sin of the world on his shoulders notice what he says we all gone astray in other words we all go our own ways we run away from our shame we run away from our pain we run away from everything but watch what he does we all like sheep have gone astray each of us have turned to our own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all watch what happens with him he didn't run away it says he was oppressed and afflicted yet he did not open his mouth he was led like a lamb to the slaughter in other words like you see a little sheep go to be turned into meat and flesh he took his body like a man like a lamb goes to a slaughter and as a sheep before the shearers is silent he did not open his mouth we complain about everything we complain about every situation we're complaining about having to stay home we're complaining about things that we cannot do we're complaining about why do we have to do this why does the church say this why does the pastor says this why is it that? and we complain and complain the bible says he kept his mouth shut by oppression and judgment he was taken away who of his generation protested in other words nobody said stop nobody said don't do it nobody said it's my fault we just walked away and looked aside and said this is a, that's how we react sometimes when the sacrifice of jesus christ before us and we're like oh i don't have to be that faithful i don't have to be that 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 christian that much of a christian god doesn't say this and we treat the the suffering of jesus as if it was nothing i need to finish up and watch this It says, yet it was God's will to crush him. Remember the lamb that I told you, the lamb was killed, his blood was shed. And the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So watch what's happening here. Jesus, the lion of Judah becomes the lamb of Israel. The, the, the sheep that had to be sent away every time, the sheep that had to be sent to the desert every time, it is no longer required because Jesus has become the Lamb of God. Jesus has become the Lamb of sacrifice for God. His blood is shed not to cover the sins, but his blood is shed to remove the sins of this world. So I want you to understand with me today that what Jesus did was not just anything what jesus did was he paid the price for your sin and my sin the weight of our sin was placed upon him and it pleased god that he was crushed the bible says to to cause him to suffer and though the lord makes his life an offering for sin watch it he will see his offering and prolong his They, in other words, the sacrifice that Jesus did for you and me is what he was expecting to bring you forgiveness and to bring me forgiveness. We are the offspring of the sacrifice. We are the forgiven ones of the sacrifice. And watch this in verse 11. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many. In other words, whenever you were guilty, you will be declared just. This is a legal term, my friend. This is a term as of a man who is in court and everything is against them his guilt is against 
against them. But at some point during the court case, somebody stands up and says, I know he's guilty. I know he's guilty as charged, but I will pay his price. Jesus took the cross and said, I will pay the price for you. I will pay the price for your sins. I will pay the price for your iniquities. I will pay the price for your transgressions. Let him go. Let him free. Let him live his life. I will bear the sin of his sin, the, the weight of his sin on my life. And I want you to understand today that no matter how right you think you are, you're still a sinner and you need Jesus. You need a savior. You can't save yourself. And Jesus is willing to pay the price. It says, therefore, I will give him a portion among the great and he will divide the spoils with the strong. And watch this, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Do you remember what Jesus said on his on the cross? Before he said it is finished, he said, Father, forgive them for they know what they do. In other words, Jesus wasn't killed. Jesus laid his life for you and for me. And there is a scripture that says that there is no greater love than one who lays down his life for his friend. Jesus showed that greater love. Jesus showed that and he did it for you and he did it for me. So today, as we meditate on all the stuff that's going on, as we think of all the things that we have, we say, thank you, Jesus, for your transgressions. For by your stripes, we were healed. And by your sacrifice, we have been justified. Your shedding of the blood has made me clean, has made me whole, has given me life. And that's why we are here today. Please bow your heads where you're at. And if there is somebody watching me in this place who has not deposited their trust in Jesus Christ today, this is the moment to do it. And I ask you to repeat this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I receive your sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross for my sins. Today, I acknowledge that I need a Savior and I can't save myself. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I repent from them and I turn away from them and I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus name, amen. If you're still there, but you believe in Jesus Christ, would you just pray along with me? Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for his sacrifice. We thank you for what he has done. And I ask you that after I leave this place right now, that there are moment to meditate and to thank you for the mercies and the blessings that you have given them today father i believe that at this moment we meditate on this that we come to the knowledge of knowing that it was through you that we have eternal life today in jesus name we pray amen and amen thank you very much monger place for being here i leave you with your uh zoom leader right now it was an honor for me to be here with you guys and i hope this word becomes a blessing to you in jesus name god bless you we'll see you next time hopefully live after all this quarantine time god bless you and we'll see you next time